and welcome to the Alpine Valley School Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Gallivan. Today, we're continuing our Founding Stories series, where I interview founders of various self-directed democratic schools from all over the world. This is episode 45 of the Alpine Valley School Podcast. You can find show notes for this episode at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast slash EP45 for episode 45. In the show notes, you can learn all about the two, yes, you heard right, two campuses of the Open School and read a transcript of my interview with their founder, Cassie Clausen. Before we get into the interview, Alpine Valley School needs your help. Our biggest and only fundraising event of the year is right around the corner. Colorado Gives Day is on December 10th, and we need everyone's help to meet our fundraising goal of $7,000. To find out more and learn about how you can help, please visit alpinevalleyschool.com slash donate. If you appreciate this show and our school, please take a look and help out however you can. Thank you. If you'd like to share your thoughts and opinions with the show, you can reach me at podcast at alpinevalleyschool.com, or you can find Alpine Valley School on virtually all social media by searching for our name. If after listening to this episode, you think our school may be right for you and your family or someone you know, please reach out to us and schedule a tour. You can set up your own tour on our website, alpinevalleyschool.com. Now, on to today's episode. Cassie Clausen is the founder of The Open School in California, which is the first Sudbury school, at least that I know of, with two campuses. Cassie talks more about the idea behind that, as well as sharing the founding story of The Open School in her interview with me. I'll let her tell you the rest herself. Here's Cassie. So my name is Cassie Clausen. I hail from The Open School. Our first school is in Orange County, California, in Santa Ana, and we actually opened a second campus this year in Lake Elsinore. I have um, a traditional education background, and I I got a, my first job out of college, really, was to be a Spanish one and English teacher at a private college prep school in St. Louis, Missouri. So I was like 22, 23, something like that. And I had this job that I was so excited about. But what I discovered is being in education, I actually really loved working with kids. And I I worked with teenagers. I was a a teacher at high school. So mostly had freshmen and sophomores. I was working with 14, 15, 16 year olds, and I fell in love with them. I just loved their personality, their spunk, their what, you know, I just loved being at school every day and being with these kids. And that was really, you know, what then drew me into saying, well, I actually want to go into education. I just, I'm curious about it. So I, I got a master's of education in, at University of Missouri in St. Louis uh, while I was teaching. And one of them was philosophy of education. And this is pretty much the first time that I ever considered that there was a philosophy of education. I just, you know, thought, well, there's teaching and then there's test, you know, we, we know how you do lesson plans and we know how you grade homework, right? Like that's how it works. Right. And, you know, I, so I remember reading and doing, writing papers about Dewey and Montessori and, um, and all of these educational philosophers who were all about intrinsic motivation and learner centered and choice and then I would go to school the next day where I was teaching and none of that existed, you know, it was not part of the system. And so I just got more and more frustrated with it. At the same time, one of the, I was exposed to Summerhill School and I just became fascinated with the democratic free school model. So, you know, I had all of the normal questions like, well, I'm sure this works for some kids who are, you know, self-motivated, but what about, you know, Dave here who sleeps through class that would never work for him or, you know, things like that. And I would just always go back and forth. Simultaneously, I was married. I am still married, but newly married to my husband who is incredibly intelligent, really smart and has a lot of educational trauma. And I call it that now. I didn't know that's what it was at the time. And it made for a really rocky start to our marriage where he was really unhappy. He didn't really know what he wanted, who he was, all of this. You know, I, I would always say education, quote, worked for me. I was, you know, top of my class and I did all of these great things. Um, but I learned really well how to play the system. I learned really well how to follow direction. And, and I, 
was starting to realize how that wasn't serving me. And we really both came to this realization that what we wanted was completely different from what we were doing. So he decided he wanted to go into video games. I decided I want to stay in education, but I need to do, I need to know more about this democratic free school thing. We visited Summerhill. It just catalyzed it for me. And so we moved back here and started our family. And I looked around and said, there's no school like this. And I came up with this idea and I thought it was such an amazing idea. I had researched unschooling and unschooling is all about life learning and all about, you know, so I was like, what if, what if we had a school that was like unschooling and Summerhill? And I thought I came up with this brilliant idea to get rid of classes and just have, you know, kids just learn from, from life, but then we run the community democratically. And then I found out that Sudbury Valley had been doing it for, you know, 40 years at that point. And, and I was not an innovator. I just started just soaking in all of their material. Um, I had young children at the time. And so I was just unsure of how I would start it. But then I got to the point where I was like, this has to happen. I have to have a school. I will start one. And um, I'm, you know, like not really going to think about all of the details and how it's going to happen and how much sacrifice it's going to require from me or from my family and all of those things. And so I put up a website and started, you know, seeing, seeing who else was available and who else was interested. Pretty soon after that, um, people started contacting me. We started opening for enrollment and we're looking for a campus, looking for a campus, and we could not secure one. Um, no one would rent to us because we were brand new. We didn't have any track record of money. You know, we had no money at the time. So what I, what we did was we opened that first year by putting all of our resources into a 15 passenger van who we still have. And I say who because he is a person and his name is Frank. And we, and we drove Frank around the county. We met in a, in a park. But when we wanted to have a home base, we used my house. I'm glad that we gutted through it. And, you know, I'm glad that we're here where we are. But the first one to two years were really hard on my, hard on my family. I do think that now we're at a place where we're, this is our fifth year open in our, you know, our first campus. I feel a lot more relaxed. And, and again, like, I can, I can start looking more globally. I can think more like big about the organization. When we, uh, when I started the whole process of, of the open school and thinking about how we want to really affect the way people think about children. And it's, it has always been a part of the vision to, to really change the philosophy and to change the way people think about children, especially in our area. But then what we really realized is, having multiple campuses, multiple small campuses in our region would do a lot more to advance this model and make it, make it, make it something that's normalized, that that would help with that vision of affecting uh, the way people think about children and promulgate this model around. But what we've actually come up with is we're creating chapter schools. So it's kind of like the way that Ronald McDonald houses are organized where there's like a, a, a national organization, but then each chapter is its own autonomous Ronald McDonald house. Uh, but it's, but it's plodding along and hopefully, you know, we'll see, this is kind of a pilot program to see how, how it goes to, to split off and kind of open a second campus. I'm really hoping that if it's something that is that, that becomes successful here, I would love to see other schools, replicate that because I think we, I mean, especially if you look at the community and the, you know, the depth and the history that, that other schools have compared to us, like, I think there could be a real potential. It almost like it makes me tear up every time I think about it of the people who've come alongside. I, there's a, there's a thing that I like to say about Santa and about uh, Christmas. He is magic. Santa is magic. And Christmas is magic. And, and the reason I say that, and I really believe this, I know it sounds super like woo woo, but like, because it's the magic of people coming together to create something. And that's how I feel about these schools. I feel about founding a school is that they're get, it's, it's magic. It's this magical point when all of these people come together to create something that didn't used to exist. It wasn't here and now it's here. And the only reason it's here is not because of me. 
If I was the only person doing this, it would not exist. I would be a homeschooling mom. That's it. So because all of these people and it just keeps snowballing and more and more people keep joining it and it does feel like this this magic thing that's beyond me um, and bigger than me. If you'd like to learn more about the open school, you can find more details in the show notes for this episode, which are available at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast slash EP 45 for episode 45. If you'd like to listen to the rest of the founding stories series, you can do so at our website, which is alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast. Thanks to Cassie for coming on the show and sharing her story. In the next episode, I'll be continuing the Founding Stories series by spotlighting another amazing self-directed school. If you have an idea for an episode, a question, or a comment, drop us a line at podcast at alpinevalleyschool.com or reach out to us on social media. As always, thanks for listening. I'm Mark Gallivan. This is the Alpine Valley School Podcast, and we'll be back again soon with more stories of real learning for real life.